Are you stupid or something? You probably are, and buddy, that's all right. You're in the right place to learn some stuff, so stick around and you just might. My name is not me, and I'll be asking some cues, and at the end you'll be riddled with AIDS. You might score real high, but even if not, you'll sure be glad you played. If you're looking for prizes, just move along, there's no money for you to earn. You win by trying and doing your best, your prize is the stuff you learn. If you want to be an artist, you have to know all you can about the world of art. So engage with this quiz and at the end you'll say, I am smart. I am not me. I am art. Mm, yeah, that's all working. And I'm your host for I Am Smart, the Not Me Quiz. The quiz where people look to improve their art, their lives, and their selves through learning and earn the right to say, yeah, I am smart. The format of the quiz, very simple, very straightforward. Three rounds of questions for your brain, three musings for your imaginosphere and a two-point bonus round at the end. 20 points overall, that's what we're playing for, ultimately. That's max. 20 points max. What are you going to need for this quiz? Something to write with? Something to write on? A brain for thinking and an imaginosphere for imagining. Optional is a beverage. A beverage. Because whilst it is absolutely nothing to do with the actual quiz, mm, we do like to kick things off with a toast, don't we? We like to do that. Oh, and the lid is off. The lid is off. That's when the party starts. <laughs> That's what we say, me and my fellow uh, water drinkers. Um, today's quiz, uh, today's toast rather, is courtesy of Instagram user Quiff. Lord O'Guff. Interesting. Here we go. To ACDC's new tour. That's right. The Rocktacular Quintet will be bringing their noise to venues all across Europe between May and August. And regardless of what you might feel about when we might all be able to retire, it's heartening to know that even some of the biggest names in rock are forced to perform well into their 70s, much as ACDC Ah, it's not an us and them problem, it's just an us and us. And if artists such as Brian Johnson, Cliff Williams, Phil Rudd, and Young by Name, Old by Nature, Angus and Stevie Young can still be vibrant and creative at their advanced age, it gives a little bit of hope to us all. For those about to rock, we recommend Simvastatin, Lisinopril, and then just uh, Amaprazole as and when for heartburn and ulcers to ACDC. Mm. And I'll have another one, please. Mm. Hello, Smarties. Hello, Smarties. Who do we have in the canoe Today, we have definitely not Duda, ready to learn. Hello, definitely, always a pleasure. TB Douglas, excited to be back quizzing. Yeah, it feels good. It feels good to be back, doesn't it? Got that energy, got that exuberance. Am I in a weird place? I mean, just on the screen, not personally. Um, Killer Kilch popping in to say hi. Hi. Monkey Pixie Funk, yo, yo to you, Monkey Pixie Funk. Now we're on to the ones that are on the screen. Hi, Smarties everywhere, says SJ Beck 72 Lovely, lovely stuff. Uh, and Super Nash 18, a plesia. Nothing short of a plesia and a treat to be able to see you. Um, how are we all doing? How are we? Is everybody well? Everybody ready for quizzing? I feel like over the last two weeks, this... Let's not mess it up too much. Let's just tilt it down a little. I just feel more comfortable there. I just feel a little bit more comfortable there, and I hope that hasn't put any of you off either. What are we doing with this cable? Where's the cable going? Where's that cable going? There we go. That'll do. That'll do. That'll do. We're all in. Um, our high point score last uh, time, if you can cast your minds back uh, three weeks ago. My gosh. My gosh, it was a long time ago. Three weeks. Our high point scorer was uh, the birthday boy in a rather delightful turn of events. The birthday boy, Monkey Pigsy Funk, 
celebrating uh, their 50th birthday um, by watching I Am Smart, the Not Me quiz. IMHO, one of the finest ways to celebrate a birthday is by quizzing and improving yourself. It's saying, hey, I'm not resting on my laurels. Yeah, I'm not. I, I, I've I've got a certain way in the last 50 years. That's great. I'm looking to take it up a notch for the next 50. And so respect to Monkey Pixie Funk for doing that and for getting the high point score. Um, which means that Monkey Pixie Funk will get to choose one of the rounds for this week's quiz. These are the rounds that you've got to choose from, Monkey Pixie Funk. We've got Yuzi Choose, Order, Iconic Art, I Know That Voice, Nart, Look Close, Anagramma Ding Dong, Yay or Nay, Spotlight Musicalage, Movie Ladder, or A Haiku's Day. Anything you want from that list, my sweetheart, please choose away. Oh my goodness. Subscribed for 27 months. Killer Kilch, thank you so much. Currently on a 13-month streak. Just absolutely joyous. Thank you so, so much. Really absolutely wonderful and, and kind and beautiful of you to do that. That's excellent. That's excellent. Uh, Monkey Pixie Funk wants I Know That Voice, please. Absolutely you can get I Know That Voice. Wanting to test the old ears, test the old hearing at 50 years old. Not a bad idea at all. Lovely stuff. Uh, and for the other two rounds, uh, let's get picking, shall we? Let's get picking. How did I do that so quickly? I've never done it that quickly. My word, I must be getting slick. At 80, I must be getting pretty slick. Music collage, order, and I know that voice. Lovely, lovely stuff. Oh, redeem change bulb color, Maple Panda. That's a shame because we don't have a color. Ch okay, but I'm going to have to. I One of the many difficulties, guys. One of the many difficulties of. Uh, running two live tainment events uh, that interchange I Am Smart and Art Right Now is that there are different viewer rewards. And I was going to look at these viewer rewards and I didn't. And I just, do you know what? I kick myself. I kick myself for looking at them. So um, this is probably not going to be all that consequential. Let's turn it around to red. That's a... Let's let maybe turn the big light off, but then that's going to interfere with the green screen. Well, we'll do it just for just for just for you, just for you, Maple Panda. Let's turn off the big light. Turn it off, baby. Let's see what effect this has. Does that look really weird and bad? Weird and bad. How is that still working? That's astonishing. I mean, it's it's fuzzing a little bit on the green screen, but we'll do we'll do it for a round, maybe we'll do it for a round. I mean, it's certainly red. Could that be redder? Could that be redder? Maybe. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's do, let's do this for a spell, guys. Let's get on with the quiz, shall we? Let's just get on with the quiz and have some fun. Uh, we're gonna. Oh yeah. What are we gonna What are we gonna be doing? What are we gonna be doing? What are we gonna be doing? We are doing, I know that voice. Oh, that's quite good actually. We might leave that till the end. That's quite good as well. Oh gosh, these are, th <laughs> okay, let's, let's, let's. It's emphasizing your tan, says Super National 8. Oh my gosh, I don't really have much of a tan. I don't go, to, I don't go tanning. It's only been winter here in, uh, New Jersey, and whilst there has been a certain amount of winter sun, I can't claim to have uh, 
uh, spent much time in it. I've been sorting things out, personal projects and such. We might explain a few of those as we go along, but I appreciate your kind words, tan wise. Uh... Let's 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 just have a round, shall we? Let's just have a round. Let's just have some fun. Let's listen to some music. It's musicalage, guys. Musicalage. Nice and simple. It's it's a new around, but one of the favourites, I believe. That's what I dream of. Where's my intro for it? Do I not have an intro for it? Is it so new that I don't have an intro for it? It might be so new that I don't have an intro for it. It's music collage. Basically, let's hope that I... uh, The thing is on. Yeah. So I'm going to play you uh, a collage of songs, guys. You're going to hear three seconds of five different songs. Your task is simply to write down the names of the songs. And you've got to pay attention to this, guys, because you are only going to hear the collage ear once. Ear once, okay? You do have a little... Oh, again, we haven't put this in yet. Uh, The clue that I will give you for all of these um, is that all of these songs were released between 2000 and 2004, and they are all big songs, okay? We're not going album tracks here. This is this is only big stuff, 2000 and 2004. We're working our way back five years at a time. Um, are we ready, guys? Are we ready? Because, again, you're only going to be hearing this once. Killer Kilch struggling with some bad Wi-Fi. We will have to... Uh, just keep our fingers crossed and pray to the Wi-Fi gods. Spectrum or whoever's providing said Wi-Fi steps up to the plate. We're all doing good. We're all ready. I'm going to assume from your silence that you're all desperately ready. Tweaking your ears into the abyss. Abyss no longer. Let's fill it with music. Never made it as a wise man Look at the stars Lucy Lou Wow Wow My ladies and gentlemen And all in between There's five songs there I just need five titles from you Can we have that again? Please not me, says Monkey Pixie Funk. The answer I give, tragically, you know I'm a people pleaser. You know I like to I like to help people out. But that is an absolute no. You hear it once, and that's it. That's that's the drama. That's the drama of the musicalage round, guys. What are those emotes? A sad emote and a kind of surprised emote? Or a weary emote? It's a lovely emote work. Emojis, I suppose, because they're not popping up on the screen. It's good work, but it's... it's. I remain unmoved. I remain unmoved. A lot of intros there. A lot of intros. And, and a shout-out to our, uh, our friend of the show, Lucy Liu. So, uh, yeah, what's that? What's that about? That's what I say. What's that about? Uh, so that's the question. That that could get you potentially five points if you write down five correct uh, titles for the songs. I don't need the I don't need the artists. I need the titles. Okay, it's difficult. Monkey Pixie Funk is expressing through the medium of emote, and I respect that emote work. But if it wasn't difficult, it wouldn't be a not me quiz. <sighs> Let's get amusing. Let's get that final point of the round. The musing is simply thus. Adele is feeling too happy to write her trademark, powerful, heart-wrenching ballads. How would you push her toward misery for art's sake? Can you do a bad thing for a good reason? I mean, this is this is really... Popping that idea under the under the microscope, isn't it? 
Adele is feeling happy. She can't write when she's happy. She doesn't write happy, poppy, zippy, Justin Timberlake, uh, Hanson, uh, Dave Clark Five style songs. No, no, no. She writes ballads. That's what the world needs. And so the world needs you to just get Adele feeling a little bit sad. What are you doing as chaperone in this uh, particular scenario? What are you doing just to get Adele to hit rock bottom? Just imagine the ballads that we can get out of her. Just imagine the depth of feet. And we'll, we'll all be singing them for the next five or ten years. Whatever songs come out of this. We'll all be, oh, oh, sitting there looking at photos of our ex-lovers, whatever it might be. The world needs sad songs. The world needs Adele to be sad. She's too happy. She's in a wonderful Vegas residency or wherever she is. She's feeling pepped up. Nah, don't need that. Don't need that. Need her sad. How are you getting her there? And that's the end of the first round. What What are the chances, guys, that when we go back to Maine, it's going to start the picking the rounds thing? Because I don't think I turned it off. Let's give it a try. You know it. You know it. There it is. Stop that. Let's stop that. Monkey Pixie Funk, I haven't felt this sad since watching Madam Web earlier today. Madam Web, the wonderful Madam Web. Dakota Johnson's uh, latest work to add to her um, oeuvre. How was it, Monkey Pixie Funk? Feel free to give us a, a little bit of a uh, little bit of a review. Spoiler free, in case anybody's um, not been quite as eager as you uh, to catch it opening weekend. I've heard mixed things. I can't believe that, really. Oh, saturation can be a bit higher. There we go. That's better. Um, yeah, let us know uh, how it was, Monkey Pixie Funk. Uh, obviously, the um, uh, obviously um, the toast this week was down to uh, Instagram user Quiff Lord O'Guff. Um, because I do every Friday now. It's a lovely tradition that I, I look forward to every week. Um, I like to put out a call to my Instagram followers to say, hey, what, what would you like to be toasted on this Sunday show? Um, and that wasn't the only one. That wasn't the only one. There's some, some lovely other options here. Uh, uh, Film Gem Digger simply says, being alive in these crazy times. That's always good. Because if you can start off from a place of, I'm grateful to be alive, everything else is good everything else is a bonus you know it's like in live aid the live aid song do they know it's christmas when they sing uh, the only gift they'll get this year is life and i've always thought well that's a pretty good gift if that's not a guarantee getting the gift of life my goodness there can't be that much better than that can there uh, and so film jim digger really going deep there really saying hey if I can be grateful about being alive, my gosh, if somebody gives me a toffee penny from a, a, an old tub of uh, Quality Street, I'm going to be jumping for joy. <laughs> Over a toffee penny? Really? That's great work from Jim Digger. Appreciate that. Let's have a look. Uh, Monkey Piggy Funk, as a 50-year-old man with a weak bladder, uh, it was a three-toilet break film. Okay, I like that idea of uh, ranking films in terms of the amount of toilet breaks both in terms of the length and the urgency. Because sometimes, you know, you think, well, I'm going to push through this toilet break because I'm so with it. But if there's more toilet breaks, you think, well, it didn't grab me. It didn't grab me by the collar, the scruff of the neck, and say, hey, watch me and my delights. Uh, I feel it f needs a Madam Web 2, but that will never be made. So I'm left wondering, what if? Interesting. Quite a, uh, a mysterious film review there from Monkey Pixie Funk. But we have to say thank you, Monkey Pixie Funk, um, for that review. I'm certainly looking forward to watching it at some point. Um, got a lot of uh, fine young actors in there, all of whom would uh, happily break your heart. If given the chance, let's do an order. Those were Uno cards. Um, order. 
Let's have a look. We need to put things in order, guys. Art needs to be in order. How can you make sense of all the art in the world without putting it in order? Riddle me that. Edwin Drood simply must be Dickens's final novel. Because if he'd just left a novel unfinished and then moved on to something else, people would think he was just lazy instead of dead. So here I'm going to give you four things, and you need to put them in a certain order. It's a very, very simple round. Let's see. Let's let's get it in the chat. Let's get it in the chat. Get some instructions just in case people need them. There we go. There we go. And this is uh, a round where you don't need to... Oh, that's strange. I'm kind of... The stuff's coming through. I'm kind of translucent in a way. Oh, because of the sun coming through the thing. How odd. How odd. I think, with respect, Maple Panda, we're going to have to open up the big, uh, the big thing. Well, I'll get this started and then I'll open it up. Okay, so... If you put two things correctly in order, you'll get one point. If you put three things correctly in order, you'll get three points. And if you put all four things in the correct order, you will get five points. But what what do we need here? What do we need here? What's the, uh, what's the order question? Nice and simple. Put these top ten best ever albums in length. Put these top ten best ever albums in length. In length what? Thank you, John Burkow. Put these top 10 best ever albums in length order. So these are four albums from, I believe it's a Rolling Stone list of the best 10 albums ever made. Um, they're all of varying lengths. Gosh, this is odd, isn't it? I need to close the curtains, I think. Um, I need to pop down because I'm too big here. So I just, there we go. There's, there's Little Not Me. There's Lil Not Me. Uh, let's get the questions up here. We have got Abbey Road, B, we've got The Miseducation of Lauren Hill, C, we've got Pet Sounds, and D, we've got Purple Rain. The Beatles, Lauren Hill, The Beach Boys, Prince. What Each of these are a different length, but put them in length order. If you know, for instance, that Abbey Road is shorter than Pet Sounds, you can just put A, C. If that's correct, you get one point. You want to put them all four in order. They'll go to five points if you get it right. If you get it wrong, that's nil point. TB Douglas, gosh, this is difficult. Complete guesswork. Well, think about the eras that they came out. Have a think about how long albums tend to be, maybe. I don't know. I don't know. Um, but I'm going to sort out this lighting here. We're going to move away from the red light. I apologize, Maple Panda, but um, that it's partly on me. It was at least only, what was it, 50? Oh, 300. 300 uh it's fine you've had a little bit of redness and i hope you've enjoyed it there we go big light on crisp crisp green screening Lovely stuff. A, Abbey Road. B, Miseducation of Lauren Hill. C, Pet Sounds. D, Purple Rain. Monkey Pixie Funk Purple Rain should be top for Prince's hair alone. It's a wonderful mop. It's a wonderful mop in Purple Rain. Anybody who's seen the film will absolutely be able to attest to that. But hair length doesn't um, actually play any part in album length. It's a common misconception, but um, they are entirely discrete values. Uh, Super Nash 8 listened to a lot of uh, B during my uni days. It's an outstanding album. It's a wonderful... Do Wop? Do Wop that parentheses that thing? Lovely, lovely stuff. Still have no idea how long it was. Well... Just think about think about maybe how many how many songs because this is length in minutes, not in terms of how many songs there are. Although that might be a good one for another time. Um, but yeah, if we're utilizing guesswork, again, it depends on how wild you want to be today. You can guess two, and then you're not risking that much. 
Or you might as well, maybe you might as well guess all four. Because if you don't know any of them, you might as well r roll the dice. It's a one in four. No, I don't know. I'm sure it's a less, uh, it's a smaller chances than that. I'm going to guess all four, says TB. Hot dog. That's exciting, TB. I'm, I'm, I'm excited to see how you do here. I'm excited to see how you do. Is it shortest or longest to clarify? It is, I believe, yeah, shortest or longest. Let's have a look. Let's have a look. Yes, yes, it is shortest to longest. And the the difference between two of them is only four minutes. Went for all four, risking it all. Guys, I am so happy that you are just you're just gunning it. You're just risking it all. Oh, it's double not me. Double not me. Take care of that. Take care of that. Good luck to all of you. Whether you know it, whether you're risking it. Oh, it just just gets one charged up, doesn't it? Just gets one charged up. But that's not all, of course. We need amusing for this round. We need amusing for the round. The amusing simply this. You create an album of music. The final track is 12 minutes long, but it isn't really. It's a four-minute song, a wonderful four-minute song, followed by a big chunk of silence and finishing with something. But what audio do you put at the end of your album? Now, historically, you know, younger viewers, younger smarties might not be aware of this, but back in the day, there used to be, um, when we were on physical media, um, there would be often be a long song at the end of an album. Uh, and it would just be a regular length song, but then there'd be a lot of silence, and then there'd be something at the end. Sometimes it might be a song. Sometimes it might be a noise. Sometimes it might be uh, a little interview, a little skit with the band, a little... It can be anything. People really mixed it up. Um, and it was a, a nightmare if you're listening to an album to fall asleep. And the music naturally kind of sends you off into a blissful sleep. Um, and then there's six or seven minutes. And then something else kicks in out of nowhere. It can often be quite uh, quite jarring. Quite jarring. It's up to you, though. It's up to you. It could be some audio that you've created. It could be some audio that you've recorded. That you haven't created, but you have been there to record. It could be a different audio altogether. Whatever you want. Let's really get creative with this. Let's really get creative with this. And if you if you want to put an extra song on the end, absolutely feel free. But tell me about that song. Tell me about that song. Give me give me an idea. Give me a feel of the song. Maybe some inspirations for the song. Maybe a, uh, an example of the sound. It's kind of sounding like X meets Y, whatever it might be. I'm excited about this because this is this is wide open, guys. So this I feel is one of those musings that really lets me get to know my smarties i've got a canoe full of smarties and i want to get to know ya i want to get to know ya what audio do you put at the end of your album that's round number two done that's round number two done How's everybody doing? Everyone's feel everyone's feeling nice and energized and like like they're risking it, like they're risking it all. I feel like you don't risk it all unless you're in a pretty good mood. So I, I'm taking that as a, a good one. Uh, we also had uh, Oodles of Craft suggested on uh, Instagram for the um, toast. Uh, the end of half term, which is a wonderful. Uh, initially, I thought, mm, gosh, the end of half term. Surely that's a bad thing. Surely. Surely you want half-term to go on forever. But then I thought, well, maybe Oodles of Craft is more on the parental side of a half-term and less on the child side of a half-term, in which case I can absolutely appreciate um, the opposite thinking there. Uh, but yeah, celebrating all parents out there, celebrating uh, children being child-minded by teachers once again. Very, very, very important. Very important. Um, and a chill bean moth month a chill bean month uh says godzilla minus one it was just really good and i have to agree with that it's a wonderful wonderful film a wonderful uh wonderful performances um from uh from several wonderful people um let's let's actually let's see if we can 
I want to show you the, the, the actor that really, really impressed me. Really impressed me. Um, oh, yes, it was so good. So good. Absolutely. Couldn't agree with you more. There we go. So let's see. Godzilla minus one. Excellent film. Gosh, isn't Godzilla just mean? Just smashing everything up. And you just think, what are you doing? Why are you doing this? No need for you to do this. He just keeps on going. Keeps on going. Uh, who was it? Who was it? Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Minami Hamabe. Minami Hamabe. There we go. Oh, she was good. Oh, she was good. Kind of a little off the uh, wrong side of the tracks, but yeah, my goodness. Just thought I could, I could just, just watch her act all day. Uh. Lovely stuff. Um, definitely not due to we saw it in black and white. Highly recommended. Lovely, lovely stuff. I'm sure Godzilla would look even more terrifying without the softening effect of colour. Lovely, lovely stuff. Final round, guys. Final round. Who that artist? No, I know that voice. There we go. Got it in the end. I know that voice. That's the name of the round, guys. Telephone calls remain incredibly popular, even though you can't see the person you're speaking to, so you can't read their facial cues or touch their arm to emphasize a point. I get it personally, but some people love them. So if a celebrity phones you to say that they love your YouTube videos and they want you to be famous with them, you owe it to yourself to know who they are. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to play you I'm going to play you five voice clips. Five clips just of just of a famous person talking. You just need to very simply identify who that person is. One point for each correct answer. Five opportunities. Some of them easy, I think. I did this round quite a while ago, so I'm trying to... My brains, who was it? Who was it? Who was it? And it yeah, that one's good. Okay. That was... Mm, yeah. I mean, because... Yeah, it's, it's varied. I think you should be able to get at least one of them. Uh, so let's prick up our ears and have a listen to this. These you can listen to more than once if you really want to. This isn't like musicalage. I'm not a tyrant. Let's go number one. I was studying law and I was a model and a casting director flew from London and she was looking for the Bond girl and she saw my card on the board and she said I want to see her and she didn't cast me for Bond but she cast me for Fast and the Furious. Gosh, it's a tough life, isn't it? When you're studying law and you're a model and a casting agent wants to see just sees your card on a board and says yeah let's see her for to be a bond girl it's tricky it's tricky because because she didn't get that job she's not a bond girl but she is a fast and the furious girl that's what we learned that's what we learned from that voice clip number two in belfast in northern ireland i just i was born in belfast went to school in belfast but lived in a place called hollywood would you believe yeah i've been away 22 years now but it's still very much home Hollywood, Northern Ireland, close to Belfast. Hollywood, would you believe? So somebody, it's an it's a Northern Islander, Northern Irelander, not Islander, Irelander. Uh, number three. The thing that was first sort of terrifying, but also interesting, was there is no character there is no story I, I think by its very nature it's a doll it's it's an inanimate object that shouldn't have a story because it is there to be projected onto gosh 
That's tricky. Talking about a doll of some kind? A storyless doll? Who the heck was that? That's the question you need to answer. Number four. Here we go. Number four. The cast and the group of people making that movie was just magical. There's a time and a place for everything and everything's, you know, happens for a reason. And that's High School Musical is like the prime example for that. I've never had so much fun, maybe a few times, but it's, it was still to this day, maybe one of the most fun experiences of my whole life. Immediately walked back that never had so much fun, didn't he? Whoever it is, they're changeable, capricious. Yeah. Got to keep an eye on them. Because sometimes they're here and sometimes they're there. It was the most fun I've ever had. Eh, maybe not. Seconds apart. <laughs> there was a mention of a certain film there. Let's see. Let's see our knowledge. Number five. Final one of the round. Still alive by the grace of God and a great team. Quite a lot of luck along the way as well. But nowadays we really try and be smart. You know, it's, we're in the business of keeping people alive, especially with Running Wild, where we're taking real iconic, big old superstars away. You got to get it right. In the wild, you only get it wrong once. There's always risk in the outdoors and in the, in the wild places. And you're dealing with rookies and big rivers and big mountains. Outdoors, running wild, phrase big old superstars these are the takeaways these are the takeaways from that one and that's number five if you want to hear any of those again please do let me know in the chat but whilst we uh whilst you're thinking whilst you're pondering i'm gonna i'm gonna slam amusing down on you and this is this is this is one that i'm pretty excited about so i want you to really uh what's the phrase go to town more than that, I want you to go to city, yeah? I want you to go to capital city on this. Answer the question, how was it working with blank, where the blank is the name of a fellow celebrity that you've just completed a project with and did not like at all? I'm going to read that out once more. Answer the question, how was it working with blank, where the blank is the name of a fellow celebrity that you've just completed a project with and did not like at all? Are you going honest? Are you going diplomatic? Are you going into what the issue was? Are you skirting around it? What was the project? Was it a, a, a film, a TV show, uh, an album, uh, 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 an award show hosting gig? Whatever it might be, you worked with somebody, you didn't particularly like it, or you did not like it at all. But somebody's asked you in an interview, oh, how was it working with James Franco, for instance? How are you answering that? Give me the celebrity. Give me the response. I think this could get real interesting, guys. We could take this in a lot of different directions. Two and three again, please. It's definitely not due to happily. Definitely. Happily. Number two. Here we go in Belfast in Northern Ireland. I'm just outside, I was born in Belfast, went to school in Belfast, but lived in a place called Hollywood, would you believe? Yeah, I've been away 22 years now, but it's still very much home. Bye bye fat. Bye bye fat. Just have that little bit again, because I do enjoy that right at the beginning. Bye bye fat. In Belfast in Northern Ireland. I'm just outside, I was born in Belfast, went to school. Bye bye fat. Uh, and then number three. The thing that was first sort of terrifying, but also interesting, was there is no character, there is no story. I, I think by its very nature, it's a doll, it's, it's an inanimate object that shouldn't have a story because it is there to be projected onto. Interesting. Interesting. Some of these you might get from the sound of the voice, others you might get from context clues within what the voice is saying. But you need to know that voice. I know that voice. Who are these celebrities? Let's go back to Maine. Oh, gosh. <laughs> Sorry, that's still Manami Hamabe there. Do apologize. Do apologize. Okay. Music collage was in there. Uh, order was another round that we had. There we go. There it is right at the bottom. Let's drag that up. 
just to make it a little easier for me. And then I know that voice underneath order. So uh, at this point, you've, we've completed all the questions, guys. Well done, you. You deserve a little treat. You deserve a little reward. You always do. You always do. So I'm going to give you something good. I'm going to give you something good. This is, uh, I know that we normally do this on um, Art Right Now. We do our world premieres. But this is a world premiere right now. Right now for you. So what I'm going to do, that's because I didn't have time to put it in. We're going to, we're going to stretch it to screen. We're going to fit it to screen. We're going to center on screen and we're going to keep our fingers crossed that this works. This is a world premiere. What if I told you that all the... No, that's not working. Why is that not working? I don't know. It should be working. There's no real reason for it to not be working. Let's try it again. What if I told... No. <laughs> no. Bring to front? Would it... Why would it be not in the front? No, because it's on the top, so that should be... Right? Free start to speed. Color range. Yeah, that's all fine. Auto. We'll keep to that. Oh right, maybe we'll try that then. Oh no, that's all that's all going already. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Let's give it a try. What if I told you no. that all the money Okay. Well I I mean I don't think anybody in good conscience can really sit there and say that I didn't try with that. Really? Could I just throw it in here? Could I throw it in here? Media file. Let's have a look. Let's have a look. Let's see. Let's see. Art, art, art. Uh, art. What if I told you oh, that all the so money in the is. world divided e There we go. There we go. So we're getting there. Fit to screen. Center on screen. What if I told you? Something's going wrong with that then. Something's going wrong with that. Reset transform. Just fit it to screen. Let's say that. What if I told? No. <laughs> I mean, you're getting the first sentence of this. What if I told? So that's right. That's what this. This world that we live in. What if I? Is sometimes just, just odd, isn't it? Reset that. Reset that. Let's try. What if I told you that all the money in the world divided evenly between all the people in the world would mean that nobody would have to work ever again? I don't blame you for feeling overwhelmed by this one. It's quite a heady concept. I'll explain it again. Basically, everybody in the world takes all of their money and pulls it into one place, perhaps into a building, much like Scrooge McDuck's, and then some math, science, clever clogs counts all the money and counts all the people. Then a second maths clever clogs counts all the money and counts all the people, just to double check. Even clever clogs make mistakes. Say there's nine billion people in the world. We give each of them one nine billionth of that overall sum. And with that money, they can retire and never work again a day in their life. Guys, I know it sounds crazy, but it's the absolute truth. That's my guess. Something to think about today. I mean, what a thought there. What a thought. Definitely worth it. Definitely, definitely worth it. But what a thought. Just taking all of the money and just redistributing it all perfectly. And there are some people that would describe that as communism, which to a lot of people is the worst thing in the world. But I think they're missing a some of the subtleties in my idea. They're missing some of the subtleties. Again, that's just a guess. I've got absolutely no idea whether that's true, but it is something to think about, isn't it? It is something to think about. Let's get some answers, guys. Let's get some answers. Musicolage. Musicolage. The musing was, Adele is feeling too happy to write her trademark, powerful, heart-wrenching ballads. They wrench on your heart, and they cause you to wrench on your own heart. Like that. 
How would you push her towards misery for art's sake? Guys, with all of these musing answers, don't just say them out loud where, wherever you are in the world because that's I'm not going to hear that. I need you to get it in the chat, okay? I need you. God, I need you to get it in the chat while we go through these answers. Musicalage. Mikey Pigsy Funk wasn't particularly happy with this. Maybe you'll be kicking yourself as well, but here are the answers to this week's Musicalage 2000 to 2004 edition. Love. Never made it as a wise man. Look at the stars. Lucy Lou. Lucy Lou. Now we're getting five seconds of all of them. This is how you remind me of really your skin. Oh, yeah, your skin. It's easy when you see the answers, isn't it? It's easy when you see the answers because you think, of course, of course it was. Those songs again, Seven Nation Army by the White Stripes, been adopted by every single sporting event in the world. Is it title and artist, says Maple Panda? Absolutely not. Just the title. Just the title. Title is all I need. Artist. artist tell you what artist is going to give you, Maple Panda. If you've got the artist as well, tell you what the artist is going to give you. It's going to give you some crock points. I know it's harder. I know it's harder. If you're waiting for me to apologise for that, you're going to be waiting a long time. It's tricky. It's tricky. Or maybe it should be. Well, for this week, it's just song title. How, how did everybody do with that? Maybe maybe people can say how they did with that, and then if it, if everybody did really badly with that, with some pretty big songs, then maybe we'll just do it artiste from now on. Um, so those are the answers. Those are the answers. Again, Seven Nation Army by <coughs> The White Stripes. Lose Yourself by Eminem from the Eight Mile soundtrack. He's talking about uh, Mum Spaghetti. I thought for a few years um, that it was Bum Spaghetti that he was talking about. It was some kind of awful allusion to nervy diarrhea before doing one of his rap battles. I've got a bad case of Bum Spaghetti there. But it is Mum's spaghetti. He's he, he, obviously an American. It's Mom's spaghetti. Uh, How you remind me by Nickelback. Oh, it's a big song. Oh, it's a big song. Uh, Yellow by Coldplay. Wonderful song. Um, although one of those tricky ones where the title of the song isn't in the chorus. Um, I don't believe, or not not particularly noteworthily. And then Independent Women, part one. I'll just If you just put Independent Women, I think you can give yourself that point. I think you can give yourself that point. I don't think we should be hard on ourselves. Uh, but let's have a look at some of these musings, guys. Let's have a look at some of these musings. Um, definitely not due to straight in with, I would cut off her access to all nail technicians. Gosh, look at this a little array of emotes there from uh, Monkey Pixie Funk. Lovely stuff. Um, yeah, she loves those nails, doesn't she? She loves those nails. And I think that probably would certainly push her misery wood. I mean, whether that would uh, hit the whole, uh, get her the whole nine yards uh, is another thing to be considered. But uh, having no nail technicians, just being, just having to live with the kind of regular nails that are the, 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 um, purview of all ordinary people um would be tricky for her you know i think she takes a lot of pride gets a lot of uh, strength from nails i think she looks to her nails as many religious people would look to their gods their gods or their deities um the nails obviously makes it nice and easy because if you're praying then you're looking directly at them nail gods could be could be um so that's that's going to get us sad that's going to get us sad 
That's a great idea, definitely. We're kicking off with a hot one there. TB Douglas, I was going to say I'd break one of Van Hale's ahead of a big performance or video. Okay, so maybe it's a combination. Maybe it's a combination. Maybe first you're getting rid of um, the nail technicians, and then you are, I don't know how you would break them in a, whether you'd want to do it in a subtle way or not. Maybe it's just bumping into her. Maybe it's um, throwing her something heavy. Oh, Adele, catch this. Oh, what? Um, or maybe it's just striding into her dressing room with a katana, unsheathing, and she puts her hands up. No, no, don't chop me with a katana. I imagine it would go in slow motion. It's a pretty spectacular part of the film. And it's just a straight line. That katana, sharp, sharp, diamond sharp, that katana from TB. Lovely, lovely stuff. Uh, definitely not Tudor that time it worked for me because that was middle school and high school years well that's good that's good glad that I, you could plumb the uh, the your memories of those times um, to really help you out uh, in what is a fantastic round of quizzing uh, Maple Panda get all the interviews to employ Cockney rhyming slang get it all slightly wrong would drive her mad absolutely absolutely um, oh Adele um uh, oh Lord! Now I've got to think of. Uh... Oh Adele, with your uh, glamorous gowns on stage, do you ever um, get a little bit worried going up um, the apples and kumquats? What are you talking about? You know, because you might trip up, uh, up over your gown if you uh, step on it when you're going up the, um, you know, going up the pomegranates and pears. It's kind of throwing her. She's like, what is this world that I'm living in? What is this world? I don't understand it. Good work. Oh, Adele, if you're... Uh, who's 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 the most famous person um, in your dog and cat? Who's the most famous number in your, uh, in your uh, tendon and bone? Who is it? Who is it? I think that's really good. I think that's nice, Maple Panda. You utilizing, utilizing her past, which is often a direct through line to emotion. That's great. Uh, Supernatural One Eight. I would tell her that she isn't allowed to swear for twenty four hours. She loves a swear, loves a curse word. I'm certainly not going to be emulating any of that. Certainly not going to be emulating any of that. This is a PG stream. Not me is for all. Okay, not just older people. But yeah, tell her she can't be blue. That's nice, Super Nashwan 8. You're telling Adele she can't be blue to make her blue. Double blue, baby. Double blue. Navy trouble. Peaches and navy. Lovely stuff. Points all around, guys. If you wrote a, uh, a, a amusing in the chat, give yourself a point, you gorgeous little thing. Let's head over to order. Let's head over to order. The musing was, you create an album of music. The final track is 12 minutes long, but it isn't really. It's a four-minute song followed by a big chunk of silence finished with something. What audio do you put at the end of your album? Guys, I want you to get it in the chat. I want you so bad to get it in the chat, your answer to this musing. While we put these top 10 best ever albums in length, Uh, so the image was let's let's get let's get little not me out i mean the uh a abbey road b the miseducation of lorraine hill c pet sounds and d purple rain but what order is it the order is simply this Starting with C, Pet Sounds, with uh, just a shade under 36 minutes. It's brief. It's brief. It's it's a lot of goodness in a small a small area, like a fruit pastel. Just a lot, a lot of goodness. Whoa, great stuff. Whoa, good vibrations, if that's on there. Uh, then we've got D, Purple Rain, 45.55 there. Uh, then we've got Abbey Road at 47.03. I thought this this was the one that surprised me. I thought this would be longer because Prince 
you know, loves to, I don't want to say go on, that seems um, pejorative in some way, but he's uh, he's uh, a, a rich and fulsome um, performer. So it's interesting that he capped himself at uh, sub sub one hour. Uh, and then the only one over an hour is the miseducation of Lauren Hill coming in at uh, a, a, a beefy, if I can use that phrase, a beefy, a porky, um, a chicken heavy, 77.39. So we're looking for ideally CDAB. We're looking for CDAB. If you got CD, you get a point. If you get DA, you get a point. If you get AB, you get a point. If you get CDB, you get three points. DAB, three points. Whatever. You you understand. You understand the uh, scoring conventions here. Um, let's get the music back up there. Album of music. What are we doing here? What are we doing? Mm, nice and big. Oh no, my gamble did not pay off. I know, that's such a shame, TB. That's such a shame. Prince messed me up also. Yeah, that's what he does. That's what he does. He Every time you think you've got a handle on Prince, he says, actually, I'm a Jehovah's Witness and I'm a really devout Jehovah's Witness. Oh gosh, okay, Prince. That's pretty cool. I thought you were a deeply sexual being. He said, nope, not anymore. You say, okay, so you, you're doing the religious stuff now. Doing the religious stuff, you're doing the music. He says, yeah. You say, okay, well, I, I can get to grips with that. And then he says, well, actually, I'm a big fan of New Girl, so I'm going to guest star on New Girl. What? Prince, what are you doing, man? Must you reinvent yourself so frequently? He says, yes. Now don't even call me Prince because I'm a symbol now. Oh, that guy. One of... One of the most artistic artists music has yet produced. What a loss. What a loss. Let's see what we've got. Let's see what we've got. Ah, but we no, let's Super Nash one eight assumed Purple Rain had loads of indulgent ten minute long guitar solos. That's what you assume, isn't it? Maybe it was cruel of me to put it in. Maybe it was cruel of me to put it in, but you know. Uh, and Maple Bandit, so if I got first and last correct, then I get two. Only if you only wrote down the first and the last. Only if you only wrote down the first and the last. So you can just write Pet Sounds and Lauren Hill. If you're confident that Pet Sounds is the shortest and confident that Lauren Hill is the longest, you can just write those two down. Leave it at that. Take your hand off the piece. I'm good. Then the maximum points you can get is one but you're not risking it further. That's that's the delicate dance that we do with the what's that round. Uh, so definitely not dude that would put in uh, audio of my nephew. Okay, lovely, lovely stuff. When he was younger, singing Starman by David Bowie. It sounded like Tarman. There's a Tarman. Interesting. And therefore, turning the song into a quite a quite a powerful anti-smoking song. There's a tar man waiting in the sky. He'd like to come and meet us, but he thinks he'd blow our minds and our lungs with his with his uh, dirty black um, carcinogen. There's a tar man. Oh well, about to spark up. Hey, there's a tar man waiting in the sky. Stub that out. Stub that out. I don't want a tar man coming after me. That's a lovely choice. That's a lovely choice. A left field choice from definitely. And we would expect nothing less. Uh, Birdsong. SJBX72. Birdsong to create a calm atmosphere at the end of the album. That's lovely. Because then, as, as in the scenario that I posited earlier... If somebody is listening to your album as they're going to sleep, then that's just that's just going to send them off to a very blissful, very natural, very deep kind of fudge-like sleep, you know? Really send them in. Lovely birds. Oh, thanks, guys. Oh, what a warbler. What a warbler that is. Mmm, delicious. Thank you, SJBeck72, at the end of your funk album. 
for putting in this bird song. You got me jazzed up, and now you're getting me chilled out. You're taking me on a whole roller coaster journey. Thank you, SJBEX72. Lovely choice. TB Douglas, I'd have audio of myself laughing with friends, guaranteed to make others laugh or at least smile. A nice, uh, I mean, we're going to be getting onto it in the next round, but as uh, question four of the next round, this is the most fun I've ever had, immediately walking it back. One of the best songs. TB Douglas going in, guaranteed to make other people laugh. Absolutely guaranteed. Well, no, not guaranteed so, so much. Um, as just a, you know, a, 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 it could be a smile. Could be a smile. But yeah, nothing nothing more powerful, comedy-wise, than, uh, than people laughing. That's why bloopers are so good. That's why everybody loves a blooper. Things going wrong and everyone just, gosh, they just had such a great time on set. That's lovely. I enjoy that a lot, TB. It's a, and that that could be good at the end of a joyous album, just to send you off in the in the, kind of the most joyous way possible, or in a very maudlin, um, gothy, miserable Adele-like album. But then just reminding people, hey, with a <laughs> no matter how much heartbreak you've got, a little laugh and a joke, and it doesn't seem so bad, does it? <laughs> I'm going to throw on some Anchorman bloopers, and I'm just going to have a Bloody great laugh. <laughs> a lovely reminder there, TB. Thank you. Uh, Super Nash 18, a massive gong noise to give people a shock after the silence. There is certainly a lot of power in opposites. Yeah. Having a lovely hot apple pie uh, with some cold ice cream. You're working with a lot of good stuff there. A lot of opposites. That's lovely. Um, a, oh, it's silence, silence, silence. Bang. Gong. Get it on. Bang a gong, get it on. That's really good. Same thing could be, you know, if you are, you know, if you have a, a, a comedy film or something with a miserable person. Yeah, you've got those contrasts working. It's good. It's good. I like that Super Nash Renate. It is mean in the, I'm listening to this album to go to sleep, but... You're looking, for, you're looking for a hard response to your art, and that's going to get it. That's going to get it. Uh, Monkey Pixie Funk, a field of cows chewing cud to instill a sense of wonder and awe. That's nice. I would say especially if your album is a kind of Kraftwerkian or um, Daft Punkian type electronic uh, odyssey that you've taken people on. A lot of this a lot of these keyboards, a lot of X's and O's, yeah? Maybe a theremin, a bit of a... Monkey, pixie, fucker, go! And then at the end of that album, that electronic funk, one assumes, powerful journey, there's cows... We're chewing to say, "Hey, now that I've t I've taken you into that electronic world, let's bring you out. Let's just remind you, hey, we're living in a natural world here. Yeah, there's cows out there. There's cows chewing cud. So go and touch some grass, okay? Go and touch some grass, and then pick the grass up, shove it in the mouth of a cow." I think that's a positive message at the end of an EDM album. Lovely stuff. Uh, points all round. Points all round. Oh, no. Where have I gone? <laughs> you couldn't write it. You couldn't write it. Uh, and then the final round, of course, I know that voice. The musing. Oh, looking forward to this musing. I hope you are all as well. Going to get those answers in the chat. I know we are. Answer the question. How was it working with Blank? Where Blank is the name of a fellow celebrity that you've just completed a project with, unnamed, unspecified, could be whatever you want. You didn't get on. Are you being tactful? Are you being diplomatic? Are you being a little bit sassy? Or are you just telling the truth and potentially jeopardizing your career if it gets you labeled as difficult? You see? A lot to contend with here. A lot to contend with. Uh, let's go through these answers. One point for each of these answers. 
a little bit more simple and straightforward than the order round. Let's have a listen. I was studying law and I was a model and a casting director flew from London and she was looking for the Bond girl and she saw my card on the board and she said I want to see her and she didn't cast me for Bond but she cast me for Fast and the Furious. Gal Gadot. Gal Gadot. The otherworldly beauty of Gal Gadot. She's got a little bit of an odd accent, but when she looks like that, you just don't mind, do you? You just don't mind at all. Um, well done if you got that one right. Now we've got... Uh, in Belfast, in Northern Ireland. I'm just outside, I was born in Belfast, went to school in Belfast, but lived in a place called Hollywood, would you believe? Yeah, I've been away 22 years believe. now, but it's still very much home. Jamie Dornan. From Fifty Shades of Grey. Growing up in Hollywood. Would you believe? There's not that many Northern Irish people. I know that the people are talking a lot in the Oscars over the last few years. Of like, oh gosh, there's you know lots of Irish people. They tend to be, I don't want to say proper Irish, but Republic of Ireland-ish. Um, so... You know, the Northern Irish, the Nordies, the invasion hasn't quite happened yet. But good luck to them. Good luck to them. Number three. The thing that was first sort of terrifying but also interesting was there is no character. There is no story. I, I think by its very nature, it's a doll. It's, it's an inanimate object that shouldn't have a story because it is there to be projected onto. Barbie she was talking about, of course. The writer director of Barbie. Shunned, in the opinions of some, for the uh, directorial Oscar. She was talking about Barbie. It was Greta Gerwig. Greta Gerwig. Number four. The cast and the group of people making that movie was just magical. There's a time and a place for everything, and everything's you know, happens for a reason, and that's High School Musical is like the prime example for that. I've never had so much fun, maybe a few times, but it's it was still, to this day, maybe one of the most fun experiences of my whole life. High School Musical, it was Zac Efron. Handsome, pretty boy Zac Efron turned, I don't know, 1970s action hero. Some kind, he's got his face has widened quite significantly, uh, either through an accident or not accident. Number five, the final one. Remember, I said artists, they don't, my god, they don't have to be actors. Still alive by the grace of God and a, gra and a great team. Quite a lot of luck along the way as well. But nowadays we really try and be smart. You know, it's, we're in the business of keeping people alive, especially with Running Wild, where we're taking real iconic big old superstars away. You've got to get it right. In the wild, you only get it wrong once. There's big always risk superstars. in the outdoors and in the, in the wild places. And you're dealing with rookies and big rivers and big mountains. Big old superstars. It says Bear Grylls. Bear Grylls. TV presenter. Outdoorsman. Frontiersman. Uh, well done if you got that one right. He's not... He was probably the least famous of all of those people by quite a considerable margin. But, you know, you got to make it tricky in these... In these, uh, these, these tough times. Uh, so well done if you got any of those right. Especially well done if you got that Bear Grylls one right. That was uh, pretty tricky. Let's have a look at the musings. Definitely not Duda. Didn't get on with Austin Butler. Elvis himself. I would tell my friends. Oh, okay, so we're getting a tiered system here. That's interesting. I would tell my friends that I walked in on him speaking in his real voice. Yes, because he has seemed to uh, adopt the Elvis voice. Uh, Kaiser Permanente going forward. Um, which is an interesting choice. He, you know, developed the Elvis voice over the months of uh, working to to play Elvis. Played him very well, IMHO, and then thought, you know what, Elvis has actually got a pretty sick voice. So why would I want to talk any other way? I'm just going to talk like Elvis forever. Um, but you walked in on him speaking in his real voice, which, 
what would that be like? Austin Butler, Elvis. <laughs> what would it be? What would it be? Hello, my name's Austin Butler. Bloody hell, I'm a gorgeous man. Something like that, maybe. Something like that, I don't know. Uh, he iced you out after seeing him. I mean, if he was talking like that and you... Bloody hell, definitely not dude who's seen me. That's crazy. Could be. To the press, I would say he was very professional. Very professional. That's again, we've got that lovely double double meaning there, or it's, it, it's kind of talking in code. That's that's quite quite scandalous. Very professional, i.e., no heart, no guts, no niceness. He's all he's all business. Lovely stuff. Monkey Pixie Funk didn't get on with Shia LaBeouf. That's a shame. That's a shame. It's a man who's been through his uh, share of issues. He was adamant that Transformers Dark Side of the Moon was misunderstood and a work of genius. I disagreed. So you just... Okay, so it's a disagreement. That's, I think that's fair enough. I mean, he himself, I, I've seen him in interviews uh, talk about Transformers 2. I want to say Revenge of the Fallen uh, in rather dismissive terms. Saying he didn't particularly like that, it was too complicated, and um, uh, so on and so forth. Uh, but that he thought that the Dark Side of the Moon was better, so that that does bear fruit. I think he he thought it was a, a work of genius. He he really liked it. I believe he said that the uh, the action that Michael Bay produced in the Dark Side of the Moon was uh, the best action that he's ever produced. So obviously he thinks it's quite quite uh, good. You disagreed. A simple disagreement. I think that's fair. I think you could say that in a interview, especially with someone like Shia LaBeouf. I think he's going to take it on the chin. Like I say, he's been through some stuff. He's had he's had his issues, and I think he's that's given him a sense of perspective that not a lot of actors have. That's lovely. I like that monkey pixie funk. I like that a lot. TV Douglas disagreed. Ugh, didn't get on with Adam Sandler. That's tricky. That's tricky because Sandler famously. One of the nicest guys in Hollywood. I just think I think it's just so admirable that he doesn't care what others think of him. He was always so comfortable on set. I think he was doing the best he could. And I appreciate that. Oh, TB Douglas with a dagger in the heart. I just I think it's just so admirable that he doesn't care what others think of him. I think that's right, and I think that's fair enough. But here's where we get the, here's where we get the slightly more pointed. Mm. He was always so comfortable on set. That's good. I think he was doing the best he could, and I appreciate that. That's a real pat on the head type situation. That's patronizing Sandler. <laughs> that's devastating. That's devastating. Even somebody as chill as Adam Sandler, I think, would feel a little aggrieved at that TB. And I think that's wonderful. I think that's wonderful. Super Nash Ran 8 didn't get on with Tom Cruise. He was very enthusiastic, and you can't criticize anyone for that. That's nice. You can't you can't criticize anyone for that. But by saying you can't criticize anyone for that, you absolutely are criticizing them. And that's great. That's great. Again, we're talking about double meanings here, guys. We're talking about here's here's the top, here's the here's the palatable, and here's just the slightly more angular. Here's here's the let's say here's the slipper on top, but here's the stickle brick underneath. Here's the Lego piece. Here's the bit of Playmobil. Here's the uh, set of keys on the carpet. Just just to give a little bit of even through a slipper, even through a delightful muckluck slipper. It's going to be tricky. Oh, if those are all four that we're getting, I'm I'm pleased with them. That's good. Points all round, guys. Points all round. Tom Cruise is so enthusiastic, isn't he? He's just, I mean, that's mainly what he's, he's built of enthusiasm. I wonder whether if he ever went into surgery, which I assume he never has done because he's, he doesn't need it. He's, he's physically the perfect man. If you took a scalpel down his chest and opened it up, there'd be no bones, there'd be no blood, there'd be no muscles, no tendons, no proteins. 
just pure enthusiasm bursting out of him. Like a light, like a beam of light. Whoa, Tom Cruise. Nana, it absolutely was. Absolutely was. Thank you, thank you so much. Gifting it as well to definitely not do that. They've given 27 gift subs in the channel. Nana, considering you didn't even watch the quiz. This is all that all that delicious money is just based on an assumption. Thank you so so much. That's it's uh, uh, just wonderful, just wonderful. I'm so so uh, appreciative of you for doing that. That's that's very very nice of you indeed. Um, was it excellent? I I think it's un. I know where I sit on that um, argument. I'll leave it to other people to let you know in the chat if it was excellent. Let's go back to Maine. Let's go back to Maine. We've got all the points that you could possibly uh, get. That's not true, of course, is it? That's not true. Got one more thing where you can get those last two points. Just to, if you're neck and neck with somebody, you want to just take it over the edge. Just take it over the edge. Oh, she's a great actress. Um, it was Jesus in a hat. Excellent. TB, there can be no finer review. Thank you so much. Minute to win it, guys. Let's do it. Sometimes a minute to win it is uh, its just something random. Last time it was African countries, and I can give you no explanation for that. Sometimes uh, these things just come to me through my chest, through my imaginary sphere, through my guts. But this one is temporally ordained, and I believe we've done it before. I believe we've done it before, but we are on episode 80 now. It's not outside of the realms of possibility that we will be doubling up on some of these uh, minutes to win it but the point is not really the topic the point is for you to for you to read my mind love a little bit of gordon lightfoot there for you um so i've written something on the light box and i'm thinking of it I'm thinking of it right now, and I'm beaming it through into your imaginosphere. If you can pick this up out of my brain, then you're going to be a, a, all the better a creator for it, okay? Let's, there we go. What's the topic? What is the topic? As it is in this country that I live, the United States of America, tomorrow it is a public holiday. It is President's Day we are dealing with U.S. presidents. Get as many guesses as you can. Where's the countdown? There it is. Get as many guesses as you can. Each guess in its own chat. Straight in. Taft. Boom. We're going Taft. We've only got 45 of these that we can go through. 46 maybe. So we should get through all of them. George Bush W, Abraham, Adams, Washington, Roosevelt, Andrew Johnson, Mar Martin, Smartin Van Uren. That's a reference to art right now, not an insult to what I assume is a, a wonderful, wonderful president. Carter, Reagan, Thomas Jeff. Love that counting sheep. Obama, Ford, Clinton, Wilson, says counting sheep. Sheep. Uh, H.W. Bush, Hoover. Carter, Nixon, L.B. Johnson, lovely stuff. Coolidge. Nice to get an idge at the end of a word, isn't it? Always a delightful way to finish a, a, a word. Carter, Garfield, Jifka, Richard Nixon, Woodrow, Eisenhower, Ford, Hoover, Washington, Adams, Trump, Wilson, Coolidge, Biden, Jackson, Eisenhower, Jefferson. Oh, Truman, Bush, Bush Senior, Roosevelt, Teddy. Excellent, excellent work. Let me just double check. Let me just double check a little something because we definitely got it. We definitely got it. Who did I go for? Yeah, okay. The person I was sending through the screen to you, of course, of course, of course. 
Uh, yep, 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 yep. Nick Cage says Monkey Pixie Funk. Maybe. Maybe one day. Maybe someday. Of course, Nick Cage only in his 50s, which we are learning at the moment for for presidents is actually um, 20 or 30 years too young. So maybe, maybe in the three or four uh, elections time, we will be getting Nick Cage um, uh, running for president and uh, just, just, just tearing it up. You have to imagine just tearing it up. Um, but we do have the plug. The plug of destiny. And incredibly enough, I'm not sure this has ever happened. Herbert Hoover. Congratulations to Countant Sheep 222, who I believe has not put a single answer in the whole quiz. Just swap swooped in at the end. What's the past term of past tense of swoop? Swapped? Really just swapped in. Swapped in with a Hoover and got those two points. So well done. Well done, Count and Sheep 222. Swooped. Okay. Congratulations, Count and Sheep. You got two points. You got two points. Incredible stuff. Absolutely. Swooped, swooped, swapped. Well done. Well done. Well done. Let's go back to Maine. Let's go back to Maine. So, guys, it's time to... Uh, Time to count up your scores. Whilst you do that, though, whilst you tot up your scores and you get them in the chat, I want to remind you that in this quiz, you're only competing against yourself. There is no point threshold to being smart. If you've got all the questions right that you realistically could have been expected to get, then you are smart. Art doesn't become successful because of the opinions of others or box office numbers. It becomes successful when you yourself say, yeah, that's great. If you think your performance today was great, then it was great. No two ways about it. And if you're watching this on YouTube, not live, maybe soon you'll be watching it on YouTube live. Maybe you should make sure you write down your score and your music answers in the comments below because I would genuinely love to hear how you did. Let's have a look. Let's see what we've got. Let's see what we've got. Super Nash Run 8 swooping in, swapping in with 11 there. Lovely, lovely stuff. A zero for Nana. A zero, but but two subs, which, you know, I know which one I pre prefer. So I appreciate you uh, showing up right at the uh, right at the death. Um, two for Counting Sheep. Two, two, two. Fantastic. Fantastic. SJ Beck 72. Five only. A tricky one for SJ Beck 72 this week. That's fine. I appreciate you playing nonetheless. A 10 for TB. A nine for Maple Panda. A seven for... MPF, the Funkster, the Funker, a 12 for Definitely Not Duda, a dirty dozen for Definitely, which means, unless there's anybody else swooping in, swapping in, swamping, scrumping in, I believe that's Definitely Not Duda, adding yet another notch in the uh, professional wrestling style championship belt of high point scorers on I Am Smart. Fabulous, fabulous work, definitely. Thank you so much, uh, everybody, for playing. I hope you had fun. How did everybody do, Let's before we go, how did everybody do at the uh, music collage? How did everybody do? What what kind of scores are we looking at there? Are we looking at fours and fives, or are we looking at ones and twos? Because we could, we could change the format, but I just want to base that on... The data, you know, not on a, not on a hunch, not on a gut feeling. I want to base it on cold hard facts. And that is interestingly. So we've we are this is episode eighty and that is win number twenty five for definitely not Duda absolutely fabulous absolutely fabulous um, four out of five for Nashwans four out of five for Monkey Pixie Funk did really well but that round is typically very difficult for me okay three five for T B Douglas four okay so this is fine this is fine two for S J Beck seventy two okay I thought it was Stickle Brick. 
agree this is usually harder for me well i think i think that's fine a, a second listen would be nice it's also cool to keep it difficult okay yeah let's try that let's try that next time okay so the next music collage we'll have it and then we'll just have it straight away again afterwards but we'll still go for song titles let's try that let's try that it's all an evolution guys it's all an evolu evolution excellent excellent work well thank you so so much for every, everybody for for playing uh next week we will have uh an art right now i'm looking forward to it uh it'll have an art bet it'll have all kinds of stuff on it so uh tune in for art right now next week um but thank you so so much for for tuning in it feels good to get get back into it a two-week break is tough for me i do enjoy uh, uh live tamers so uh thank you very much for um yeah being here with me and enjoying uh enjoying just just quizzing just enjoying it yeah um i hope you all had fun i hope you learned a little something and i hope you felt creative all at the same time i am not me i am art and i hope you'll join me same time same place in two weeks time where you'll have another opportunity to improve your art and yourself through learning and say to yourself yeah baby i am smart thank you so much guys cheers to all indeed and i will see you next week you are smart look at those emotes so there we go and well done you whatever your score might be i definitely think that you are smart though probs not as smart as me your art will be better, trust me on this, should be nothing short of sublime. That's why you learn, and don't stop now, I'll see you right here next time. I am smart, 